In September 1939, the Second World War began. The Polish campaign was a brief one, but the Poles managed to fight off the German opponents for more than a month. The Polish plan of defense was based strictly on the assumption that their Western allies, especially the French, will launch an offensive in the first part of September in order to, uh, to counterattack, in order to engage the German troops, thus relieving also uh, the pressure on Polish troops during the Polish campaign. The French offensive never happened, or rather it was a limited, really small-scale counteroffensive, and due to this fact, the Poles were left alone, even though they fought to the bitter end. And even after the end of the Polish campaign, they still continued to fight until the end of the war. The Polish campaign is an interesting subject, but, but rarely used in wargaming. Today, a presentation of a project which is covering the Polish campaign from the Polish perspective. Hello, this is Michelle Bajetan Sorbet, and this is a new episode of Wojennik TV. The Polish campaign, the start of World War II in Europe. This is a subject which, as I said a few moments ago, is not very often used in wargaming. Even though we have some games covering this topic, but few of them are precise, few of them are complex, few of them are, such, are so detailed that the project that I will be showing you today. This will be the presentation of a prototype version of a game called In Force to Heaven. The original title of the game was different. Now it is In Force to Heaven, which is uh, taken from a Polish, Polish poem uh, called Pieśni o żołnierzach Westerplatte, the song of the soldiers from Westerplatte. Westerplatte was a Polish garrison in Gdańsk, uh, which who defended against the odds for more than seven for seven days at the beginning of September. They were doomed from the beginning. They were overwhelmed, uh, but still they resisted, and they are up until today one of the symbols of the Polish resistance during the September campaign. The game was created by Grzegorz Kuriłowicz, and this is his child. This is his uh, greatest achievement, his greatest design, and his greatest desire to publish this game, to release a game about the September campaign. This is his great passion. He has a weakness, a blind spot for the Polish campaign. He's a passionate. He knows such a lot of interesting facts that I was really impressed when talking to him. The game will be covering especially the northern part of the Polish campaign, meaning that it will be covering the most important uh, the most important events, both from the fight from the Polish corridor, uh, which is the corridor leading to the Baltic Sea, as well as all the fighting which took place uh, took place uh, near Poznań or near Warsaw, and uh, where also the German troops uh, tried to encircle the Polish capital. So we will be having several scenarios in this game. We will be having also a campaign mode enabling us to recreate the whole Polish campaign. This is the first opus in a series because Grzegorz wants to release a whole series of games covering the Polish campaign. This one is called Heres Gruppe Nord, which means that it covers the northern part. It doesn't cover what happened on the eastern part of Poland when Poland was invaded also by the USSR, although the USSR activity will influence what is happening, obviously, also on the western front, uh, meaning the western part of the Polish front. It will not be covering also the events of the southern part of the front. This is maybe an idea for an additional expansion, or maybe it will be another, another addition possible to the base game. As far as I know, the game already has a publisher, but for now it is uh, not, not anything 
confirmed. So this is still a prototype and mind this while taking a look at the components of this design. So during this video, I would like to briefly show you how the prototype version of In Falls to Heaven look. Then at the end of this video, I'd like also to share with you my initial thoughts concerning the quality of the components and also of the whole idea of implementing the Polish campaign in such a way. So let's now dive into it and let's take a look at how the elements of the prototype version of In Falls to Heaven look. Here is the box of the prototype version of In Force to Heaven, a game about the Polish campaign by Grzegorz Kuryłowicz. Uh, the box cover quite interesting with the German eagle over Poland, uh, with also an annotation that this is volume 1, Heres Gruppe Nord. When looking at all the components which are inside the box, I must say that I was really impressed when looking at them for the first time because this box is really full of, uh, full of elements. This is a prototype version, but uh, this is also the fruit of several years of work by Grzegorz and he really put a lot of heart into this project. The reason why uh, this box is so full is the complexity of the game. And we can just take a look at the list of the components which is uh, added to the game uh, to, to see how many of them are inside. Uh, this is obviously a Polish list of the components, but the sheer number of the types of elements and the quantity, for instance, of counters make you instantly uh, make you instantly think about the complexity, about also uh, the number of elements which will be part of the final version. This is also a reason why Grzegorz decided to include additional tutorials or additional explanations about how to tackle the game, how to start playing. And this is something which I really appreciate because the game is quite complex and when taking a look at it at first glance you might feel a little bit overwhelmed by the number and sure quantity of what you receive. This is the reason why Grzegorz added this explanation, jak zacząć, how to begin, uh, which we should read uh, in first place. Here we have an explanation concerning what to use in order to prepare the first scenario, which elements will be needed in order to start playing. We do not have to use absolutely everything because those elements are, are elements which can be used in different scenarios. Here we will be needing only a certain number of them and this explanation tells us exactly what to use. We receive several documents in the game. The first one, Czwórkami do Nieba, so in Force to Heaven, are the rules. Uh, and this is a document which again firstly explains what is the purpose of the game, and uh, then what are the elements inside the box, and then we have an explanation concerning uh, the basic the basic mechanism. Obviously, this is a prototype version so a lot of things will change a lot of things is still not present a lot of things will be maybe removed from the final project uh, but even so the complexity of the game is quite impressive the second document are the scenarios and at this moment or rather when Grzegorz sent me this prototype several scenarios were already were already done and ready to be tested and at the first pages of this booklet we can take a look at some of the counters and the explanation of those counters so we receive for instance a Westerplatte counter a legendary battle counter we receive reinforcements we receive counters concerning dates activations planned attacks by infantry isolated units and we have also an explanation or a list of the activation tokens. So this is where you can learn or take a look at how to read information which are present on different, on different units. As you can see, we have also a scheme showing how units lose their steps. Uh, for instance, a division has three steps and it loses steps being disrupted then eliminated. Uh, a cavalry brigade also has, th has three steps, it is reduced, then it is disrupted and finally eliminated. So it will depend obviously on the unit type. We have aircraft counters, which are also explained. We have uh, railroad counters, we have also some naval units, 
everything that historically was part of the September campaign. Then the list of the scenarios, as you can see, 10 scenarios uh, in all. I do not know if this is the final list and if this is the final number which will be included in the game, but still we have scenarios which are set in different uh, in very different uh, regions of Poland. So for instance, Campania Heres Gruppe Nord uh, is the big campaign which enables us to play the whole, to recreate the whole September campaign from September 1st up to the beginning of October. But we have also smaller engagements, for instance, uh, Campania Czołgina Ochocie, which is a four day scenario from the 5th to 9th September. Uh, we can play Rzeka Krwi Mława from the 1st to 5th September, so it's up to us what to choose. Uh, then we have an explanation about how to prepare the campaign. As you can see, we have also a depiction of the map showing us exactly how to place the elements. And the same applies to the units, which will be placed on different parts of the map. Uh, then we have the different campaigns, but as you can see, some pages are still blank. So for instance, the fourth, the fifth scenario are still under work, they aren't ready. Others, such as the ninth, Pancerna Pięść Piotrków, is already, uh, already here and it can be tested. Then, at the end of this booklet, we have the counter manifest, when you can take a look at how many and how different those counters are, uh, the number is really impressive. Then we have a procedure of the turn, which tells us how a turn is structured. And again, it seems quite overwhelming because just looking at how a single turn of in to Haven looks, uh, we can see that a lot of things will be going on. Uh, starting from point one, we will be passing through point 10 on the first page, and then to point 17, and finally ending on uh, the second part of this player aid. But some of those steps will only occur in certain scenarios. For instance, we have a very short phase related to Westerplatte, Hel, Gdynia, Oksivie, uh, which are uh, which is activated only if uh, any of those places is still defending against German aggression. Uh, we have some very short phases concerning mine laying in the uh, Gdańsk Bay. Uh, we have also orders uh, which are attributed to the Schleswig-Holstein somewhere in the Gdańsk Bay. So those, those are quite short, uh, short phases. Others will be much longer. Uh, then we have also an abbreviated procedure uh, which explains again some of the most important mechanisms such as movement, such as combat, uh, such as... Uh, yeah, that's it. So we have other ones related to the Plan West, to Guderian Höpner Höf, to the Luftwaffe and others. Uh, those will prove useful when executing specific actions. Then we have also a single page related to morale and to the legendary battles. Uh, a glossary, which for instance helps us to better understand what is advanced after combat, what is a NER base, uh, what is for instance also the CRT, the combat results table, uh, DRM. So those are all the information which are explained uh, in order to take a look how to read them. Uh, then we have charts, a first uh, player aid with charts where we have the CRT combat resolution table. Uh, we have also another one related to cavalry uh, battles. Uh, we have also a, a special table which is related to Luftwaffe attacks and many overs. As you can see, we have really tons of such elements. So we have, for instance, again, once more, the sequence of the turn we, on a smaller player aid, uh, the legendary battles. Then we have additional small charts used for specific scenarios. Uh, we have the Luftwaffe attack, so those are all the tables that we also had on the previous chart. Uh, we have a turn track, which can be added to the map. Uh, we have additional small, uh, small placements where we can place uh, small boards where we can place cards, because we will receive additional cards in the game. 
Uh, then we have also once more an explanation concerning how to read the information on the counters. Uh, the terrain effects chart, as you can see, we have different kinds of terrain, each with a certain impact on combat. Uh, then we have again some additional tables which were already present on the player aid shown before and the big chart or rather the big the big uh, display on which we can place additional information concerning for instance the USSR the uh, the allies and uh, the western plan etc then we have the cards because as i mentioned a few moments ago we will be having also cards in this game and those cards will come in different forms we will be having cards related to the western front uh, where the french activity can influence what what happens also in poland so we have the Saarbrücken offensive uh, as you can see with different numbers and with different historical events. For instance, the first one is the offensive in the Saar region, uh, the declaration of war. Uh, then we have additional elements, Gamelin przesyła dobre wieści, so Gamelin sends good news. But then the offensive stops, as we well know, French troops managed to, uh, manage to take control of some of the villages uh, or smaller a small locations in the Saarbrücken region but then they retreated behind the Rhine and the strange war began. Uh, we have Soviet cards uh, which also will be used in order to track what the Soviets do during the uh, during the September campaign. Uh, the Soviets can enter the war earlier but they can also enter the war later which will significantly help the polish troops to fight against the german invaders and we have also over cards related to different events happening from the 1st of september up to uh, october the 6th when the last major polish formation had to lay down their arms and the campaign ended so related to those dates we have things which happened at that point for instance the evacuation of the polish government and of the gold reserve of the polish bank happened on september the 7th uh, and those historical events will have an impact on the game then we have the counters and what i really appreciate is the fact that grzegorz while sending me this prototype also uh, uh, also in, uh, separated all those counters and he organized them in different uh, in different small bags uh, it is far easier to find the uh, counters which will interest me in order to play a game so as you can see they are sorted by type by unit uh, for instance here it's a bag in which we have all the aviation all the fleets and all the forts you can take a look at how some of those counters look Here we have also some small cubes which are used in order to indicate bridges, which will be extremely important elements. Uh, then we have administrative counters, for instance, those used to track information about Warsaw, about morale. Uh, then we have also the Pomorze and Poznań armies with different units, as you can see, with some stats on them concerning movement, concerning power and organization. The fourth army by, led by Gunther von Kluge. So here we have German units uh, and activation tokens. Everything is sorted, ready to be used. I really appreciate the fact. We have also additional cards. Here we have logistical cards. Those are player aid cards. If you prefer to use player aids uh, in form of cards, you can use them. We have also additional cards, counteroffensive, a counteroffensive, Koło Meja, Kowal, Brześć, Warsaw. Those cards will be used when a scenario will be 
uh, when a scenario will tell us to use them. So as you can see, we have German officers such as such as Guderian, such as Hermann Hoff or Erich Hüppner. We have a Luftwaffe card, logistical card. We have the Polish headquarters, move combat, etc. So those are orders, operational orders, which will be used during the game in order to activate units, in order to make them move and maybe attack your opponents. We received two six-sided dice, a white one and a green one. Uh, we receive a flag, as you can see, a Polish flag. And finally, we receive also maps. Uh, now here is the first map, which is a map used for the Muava scenario. Now the maps are quite interesting, as you can see, quite colorful. I did not know if they are the most uh, uh, the most uh, distinctive ones in terms of how uh, how well it will be to read information on those maps, but they are quite interesting. They are quite pretty. I think that it's a question of uh, preference. I do not mind playing on such maps. I believe that it all depends on our preference, but I think that the final maps, which will be part of the game, will be somewhat different. They will be closer to what we know from other war games. Uh, so this is the Muava map. We have a Piotrków map, again, a small map, which shows the region of Łódź, uh, Sieradz, Zduńska Wola, so this is another part of Poland, uh, Częstochowa. Then we have again a very small map which is depicting the Polish Baltic corridor. We have Gdańsk, Gdynia, Westerplatte, which defended uh, seven days against all odds. Uh, we have also the Hel Peninsula. So all this area defended by the Poles so stubbornly during the first days of the war. Uh, we have a map which will be used in order to recreate the Bzura battle alongside the Bzura river towards Warsaw uh, with also the Modlin fortress again with which uh, we have one more map, Borytucholskie, again also a place where a big battle a, a big battle between Polish and German troops took place. And apart from that, we have also a map showing Heresgruppe Nord and Wrocław, at the time a German city. One more depicting the eastern part or the central part at that point today it's the eastern part of Poland to at the, in 1939 it was the central part of Poland with Lublin my home city Zamość Helm the border today is here but at the time Poland was uh, uh, far to the east uh, with additional territories gained after the Polish-Soviet War in 1920-1921. And we have also one huge map, a paper map depicting almost the entire Polish territory, or the northern part, because as, as mentioned earlier, uh, this is volume one, Heresgruppe Nord. And here we have all those, uh, all those uh, territories. We have the possibility of recreate the whole a Polish campaign in the north, so we have uh, the Polish corridor, the Baltic corridor, we have Warsaw, uh, we have different parts of the Polish territory and we can recreate the major engagements fought in the north, so Mława, Borytucholskie, everything can be recreated thanks to this big map on which we will find also a number of tracks used for activations, used to, to, to track time uh, and additional elements. So as you can see, in the box of Infos to Heaven, we find a lot of components and those are components which even today, I must say, are of a quite high quality. This is due to the fact that Grzegorz worked really hard uh, and he really gave his, uh, gave his heart and soul in order to create the best possible game. I hope that the final product will be really an interesting one. 
So now I'd like to invite you to the final part of this video because I'd like to tell you also a few words about this project and to share with you also my initial impressions concerning the number and the quality of the components of this game and what to expect from the final release when this game is really published. Grzegorz Kurgowicz has been working on this project for several years and this what I showed you today is the current state of his work. The elements which are inside the box will surely change and during the process of development when the game is, uh, is taken by one of the publishers uh, it is polished, it is obviously also, uh, also redone when it comes to the graphics, when it comes to some of the mechanics it will obviously change. But still, even now, I believe that the quantity and the sheer quality of what Grzegorz prepared is something which stands out. Not every prototype is so complex, not every prototype is done with such care in order to help a reviewer, a tester to dive into the game. As mentioned earlier, I really appreciate the fact that Grzegorz uh, already prepared all the counters which are needed to play the game and he put them inside several bags additionally adding stickers telling exactly what is inside a specific bag. It enables to find the counters needed very quickly. It also enables to, we do not have to spend time sorting them. Additionally, he prepared also those uh, aforementioned pages where we receive information concerning how to begin even playing. This is extremely important when we try to approach complex games and this one is a complex one, although while Looking at how it works during one of our recent conventions, Wargaming conventions in Poland, it is not that complex that you might expect. You have a lot of elements, but only some of them will be used during each scenario. Of course, if you want to play and recreate the entire campaign, this is a whole different story. You will be using all the counters, all the elements, all the cards which are inside the box. I believe that this is a very interesting project, a Polish project about the Polish campaign. We had really not a lot of Polish games covering the Polish campaign. As far as I know, only a few of them, and some of them released in the early 90s of the past century by the non-existing but legendary publisher Dragon. We had Bzura 1939 covering the Battle of Bzura, and we have Muawa, and we also had a module called Lądowa Obrona Wybrzeża, so focusing on the defense of the Polish coast. But games covering the whole Polish campaign, or the majority of it, in Poland were not released until that moment, as far as I know. So this is a breakthrough, this is something which we deserve to receive and we want to play such games. The passion for history from Grzegorz is something which is uh, a great positive factor influencing the development of this project. And I am certain that when this game is taken by a... By a Publisher by a developer, it will only become better. I wish to show you in Force to Heaven also in other videos when I would like to show you how it mechanically works because showing you how it looks, even, uh, even if this is a prototype, is one thing, but showing you how it works and showing you the ideas behind the game, which are quite original ones, is something different. And I will try to show you, uh, show you them in some time. So this was the unboxing of the prototype version of a game called In Force to Heaven by Grzegorz Kuriłowicz. I thank you a lot for watching this video. I invite you also to take a look at other videos on my channel. Take also a look at what I'm publishing on Facebook and on Instagram. Have a great day and see you next time.